guess let's just get into it now that I've rambled for five minutes or so. Uh, LG. We, I mean, I feel like it's been, we've talked about this almost exclusively for the past several weeks, but the thing is, LG has now finally officially announced that they are no longer going to be in the, they're no longer going to be in the smartphone game, which is a bummer, a big time Bummer for me, especially, uh, and, and for a lot of other people, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, they've, they've not been doing very well in the smartphone game here for quite a little, a little bit of time. And now they are leaving the smartphone game entirely. In fact, if I understand correctly, there will be no LG phones released this year, at least not flagship phones. Um, and they're going to be out of the game here within the next... I think by July, they were going to have everything totally shut down. And they do say that they're going to continue to support their phones over how it depends on the region, <laughs> uh, but they're going to continue to support their phones. So uh, this is a, this is an article from hype beast after losing $4.5 billion over the past five years, LG, is out of the game. And, you know, just back in CES not long ago, uh, CES, the virtual CES that we all, well, I didn't pay any attention to. Maybe you did, but I, I didn't do any of the stuff. Um, they had this rollable phone that was like, a, you know, like kind of like a folding phone, but it rolled out. They had that, and that... Um, was rumored well that was supposed to come out this year and then they announced that that was on hold they announced that the predecessor or the the follow-up <laughs> language <laughs> the follow-up to the v series this year um was go was going on indefinite hold and we had heard these rumors all over the place that LG was going to step away. I guess they tried to find buyers for either their entire deal or they tried to find buyers for their U.S. market. There was talk of a Vietnamese uh, a Vietnamese smartphone company that was talking to LG about buying their smartphone business, at least in, in North America, and it uh, didn't happen. It didn't happen for whatever reason. I don't know. And so LG is is hanging it up. I mean, if you lose four point five billion dollars over the course of five, what is it, five years? Is that what they said? Yeah, over the course of the past five years, if you lose that much money over the course of five years, I guess you could you could say that you're not doing so well. You know, and and uh, and Chris says here, like LG TVs are great. Yeah, I have an LG uh, C9 that I like a ton it's a great tv um and so lg is a great lg is a really good company and lg make made really good phones they had some hiccups along the way that have been much discussed uh the lg g5 had a modular design and it was but it was kind of a piece of crap and that kind of the lg g2 3 and 4 were really well loved and people were really into them. In fact, I had some people talking to me on uh, on in comments saying that they still had their LG G4 or G2, I think, until it, that like the screen just totally died, and and so they they just when the G5 came out and it wasn't a very good phone. I think there were problems with this with the screen as well as just being kind of not very well put together. I remember Erica Griffin doing a video where she could, she was scraping the paint off of the phone, which is never a good sign. Um, and yeah, so the G5, I think that was one of the phones that had a boot loop issue where I don't know exactly what was happening on the software level, but the phone would just like sort of not boot up. It would just get into this cycle and then it, it just it basically bricked the phone. And there were several models of LG phones around that time that had that problem. Um, 
but LG did fix that problem. It never it never reemerged, and that was 2016. I want to say maybe even maybe a little bit earlier. So LG fixed that problem. Never had it happen. Never had it happen again. Uh, the V series came out around that same time. The V10, which was a really cool and bizarre phone. Not only did it have a high quality headphone jack, but it also, I mean, it was it had a stainless steel frame with stainless steel rails on the side. It was had a little secondary screen that was like a ticker that would show you all your different stuff and you could use it to quick launch things. Um, it was a really cool phone and I really liked it. Um, it's, and so as time went on, like the V2 kept that little, or the V, the, the V20 kept that little screen. And then the V30 kind of went to a design that was more like the other smartphones on the market at the time, kind of like rounded off pebbles, slate design. Um, and LG, now I'm not going to blame Every, I'm not, I have other people that I'm going to blame in this live stream. and But LG is not blameless here. Uh, LG was not very good at promoting their phones. LG did not uh, LG did not market their phones effectively, which doesn't make any sense to me at all. Uh, you know, they do one commercial for one of their things. Well, you know, like one of the phones once a year. And the last one that I remember is a Joseph Gordon-Levitt starring uh, f uh, commercial where he was using the V30, I think, and running around and doing all kinds of things. They kind of marketed the phone as as like a, a creator on the go kind of phone, which is what they did with the V-series early on. Um it had you know, from the from the V10 to the V20, we got we went from you know not a quad DAC to a quad DAC and and a, and a headphone amp, and then they went and, and kept that headphone jack. I mean, for a major manufacturer, you know, like they they still were the number four seller of smartphones in the U.S. in the past year. So for a major smartphone manufacturer in their flagship phones, after everybody else had ditched the headphone jack and and technology is very much a follow the leader kind of game they stuck with the headphone jack in fact they stuck with the headphone jack to the point where they <laughs> they were like not doing what anybody else was doing in fact they went the opposite direction and made it the best headphone jack that you could get on a phone but they never they never they never advertised the phone to, I think, the target market for that kind of phone, which would be the audiophiles, the people who who love to listen to music, the people who pay for high quality title or or any of that kind of stuff. They didn't market the phone as like the audio, the audio uh, like aficionados phone for whatever reason. So marketing was bad, and as Michael says down here in his uh, in his little. Uh, comment the second part was lg was never very good at supporting their phones with timely software updates whether that be timely updates for the operating system which is the one that you can see and and you know you get all ex excited about but also like the security updates were often delayed and that's that's somewhat of a bigger deal especially if you're using the phone for business and those are the things that LG didn't do well. Like, here's a story, a story for me from trying to connect with LG and and uh, get get in touch with them about doing more with covering their stuff. Um, I went to CES 2020, and I went to the LG. You know, they had a some companies have like a little booth. Some companies have like a giant room all to themselves samsung lg they just have a giant space all to themselves and stuff spread out all over the place so i went to the lg smartphone section and and i was trying to figure out who worked there and it looked like volunteers after i didn't really find anybody to talk to there i decided to go out to the front they had like a little lobby area vestibule and i went up to the the help desk that they had. And I asked the young fellow that was behind the help desk. I was like, do you have anybody 
uh, from marketing or PR that works with social media folks and that I could talk to, you know, I, I, I cover LG phones a lot. I'd love to speak to somebody about, you know, doing more. And he got this really quizzical <laughs> look on his face. Like he'd never, like he'd never heard a question like that before and said, no, I don't think we do. So LG is not blameless in this situation by any stretch of the imagination. They could have done some things better, but I am going to call out the, not just the YouTube community, but the, the community of tech smartphone coverage at large, whether that be the blogs, the, the online magazines, the tech YouTubers. I said the other day that when it comes to smartphones, tech YouTubers have really driven the bus when it comes to making smartphones uh, one of the, well, continuing the, the push for smartphones as one of the top technologies, one of the driving forces in technology over the past 10 years. And, you know, we there's a lot of tech YouTubers who, who've been out there doing this tech YouTube thing for quite a long time. And they've built they've built huge, successful channels off of it. And what I noticed as the smartphone market started to uh, started to con contract. Right. And it became more about Samsung and Apple and Google was interesting for a while and that kind of thing. What I noticed was, other than you know myself and Juan Bagnell and Tech Odyssey, who's been covering LG, and also uh, somebody mentioned Jay Williams, uh, you know, and none of us are huge YouTubers by any stretch of the imagination. But the last time I saw a large YouTube channel, like a, a, a multi-million subscriber YouTube channel, cover an LG phone, and I, you know, I don't. I don't keep a database of who covers what phone. So I could be wrong here. But the last time I remember seeing a review personally was MKBHD doing a review of the G8. And now the G8 was not an inspiring phone. It was not like it was not pushing the envelope by any stretch of the imagination. But by all reports and in, in my own ex experience with the G8 was that it was a perfectly serviceable phone it had its really good qualities it had a lot of it had a lot of things going for it but it wasn't part of the samsung apple battle for for supremacy and the tone of his the tone of his review if you could even call it a review was somewhat dismissive and the and the outcome of it was that you were made to think that this was a total like piece of garbage phone. Uh, maybe I would feel, I, I haven't watched the video since it came out, but I remember being really angry because he was being so dismissive of the phone. And I felt like, now I, I, I've talked to Marquez before. He is a really great guy. And I'm, this is not an attack on him personally, but I was disappointed with the way that he covered that phone because he just seemed to dismiss it. And there was no risk involved for him to, to really like kind of slag it on the few things that were, that weren't great about it. And when you're Marquez Brownlee and you have the ability not the when you have the 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 i guess audience that he has this the the whole the breadth of his of his influence on the the smartphone game you can you can sink or swim uh you can just like totally torpedo a product maybe without even realizing that that's when it, what's going to happen but totally torpedo a product and in some cases like an entire an entire an entire company out of the water and i felt like once once he sort of had his say on the g8 a couple of years ago i never again now Floss, flossie carter another person who covers the v-series phones and and um and or not just the v, the lg phones and and i and i love that i mean if, one thing i love i love many things about flossie carter but one thing i love about floss is that he covers everything 
and he tr he does everything that he can to be totally objective about what he's covering you know and so he'll tell you if a phone has you know some places here and there and that that aren't quite up to snuff but you know i mean as big as floss is he doesn't he doesn't have the reach that marquez or uh lou from unbox therapy or you know any of the people who like are in the five to tens of millions of, of viewers and um <laughs> the thing is when when you now this sort of sort of leaks out to the whole rest of the youtube community i feel like because when when you're a smaller youtube channel and you're trying to break into the smartphone market with your coverage and you you see who is talking about what phones and the you know the biggest smartphone reviewer on on the planet has just torpedoed a phone like that was that was to me like one of the nails in the coffin for LG.